Hello and welcome to the Theatre of Dreams for this very special show. This is what it's all about, the Betfred Super League Trophy. Wigan have won it on five occasions. Or could the Catalan Dragons lift this famous trophy for the first time? Have you caught your breath? You're going to need it. What a season. What a journey. But what a journey without a destination. This has always been where we've been heading. Not all roads made it this far. JR, my friend, you did it all. But now, a new hand is going to take that trophy. Believe me, there's two ways this game can go. There's only one side that you want to finish on. Sam, Mitch, I've been in those shoes. One last rugby league crossroad. A lifetime in the game with one last chance of glory. A man for the biggest moment. Tom Kidd! The Dragons, from the Brutus to the Big Dance. Fearsome forwards and flying wingers, hoping to take the prize back to Perpignan for the very first time. The Warriors, the old foe, giants in the game with a trophy cabinet to match. French and Field, stars to light up any stage, but this team's built on more than just two. Table toppers, they finished strong and they're still going, but this win is going to take everything you've got. Dig deep, breathe it in, that atmosphere. There's nothing like it. It makes you feel alive. The flames, the crowd, the intensity, the ecstasy, the agony, the biggest night of them all. The Betfred Super League Grand Final. There is nothing like league. Yes, we certainly have got a very, very special show for the next half hour as we build up to the Wigan Warriors versus the Catalan Dragons. I'm joined by a man who's won the grand final on four occasions, Paul Schoolthorpe, and this man is looking to make it for. He won it three times with Wigan, and now in the Catalan Dragons. The final dance, the big dance. How are you feeling? Really excited, yeah, and... Uh... Amazing opportunity for us to, to get what will be our, our first grand final win as, as Catalan Dragons. You know, we've we've had a Challenge Cup, we've had a, a league leaders, but we've we've not yet had our hands on the, the big one. So yeah, Saturday is our opportunity. Come on, Sam, how are you really feeling? I'm last good. <laughs> I'm excited. In the last 80 minutes of your illustrious career. Do you know, like loads of people have said to me, you know, what does it feel like being your last game? And I wish you had a more romantic answer, but I think <laughs> because it's You'll know you, the grand final week is pretty intense. We've done loads of video, we've trained, it's getting the body right, extra recovery. Uh, we trained this morning, flew straight in, come from the airport to here, so um, probably not had too much time to think about it, to be honest, um, which is, I think, a good thing. I think after the game, yeah, it'll probably be emotional and I'll then see it as, as the end, but um, as of yet, I'm, I'm still a professional rugby player, yeah. so I'm, I'm not retired looking, yet. Uh, looking back to last week, that, that finish, could you could you have written that? Yeah, first it's, of all, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. Man, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not some of them, no, I don't play. <laughs> but, you know, rolling, rolling back the years there, mate, and I'm sure I've seen that, that celebration somewhere before. Yeah. Uh, totally it's, wicked. I've waited, <laughs> I've waited 11 years to do that again, you know. Uh, it was funny, I got a, someone sent me a, a tweet before the game, or a couple of days before, and said, fancy doing this one last time, and I just thought, oh, that would be pretty funny. And then... As it happened, you know, the, the way that we scored last minute, um, I thought there's only one thing I can do here. It's uh, it's annoyed Saints fans for 11 <laughs> years, so I'll give them another 11 years to <laughs> you know to the, You know they'll love you, after, uh, <laughs> know they'll love you after Saturday. Yeah. How do you, uh, you win it? Um, a lot of hard work. I think Wigan are a, a great seed. The, the, the machine like Wigan, they're pretty easy to plan against because you know what they're going to do. Stopping it's a completely different thing. Um, they, I think us and, us and them are the best two teams this year and I think it's it's going to be a, a real battle. This What we've proved this year though, between Catalan and Wigan, we've we've played each other and both been off at certain times. We played them at Magic, they were off and we won convincing. convincingly. They, they came over to France uh, a couple of months ago. We were off, they were on and, and they won. So that won't happen this week because 
in a grand final, both teams will be on. Um, it's going to be a war, it's going to be a battle, it's going to be tough in the middle. We've got both sides, have got amazing edges that can, can bring us the brilliance and the, and the fancy try scoring. So I think it's set up to what will be a great to, final. Uh, talking to Baka before, and he says last last weekend is the perfect training session for a grand final. Now I think it can be taken both ways, can't it? It was obviously a very, very physical you know, uh, encounter. Yeah. How do you, how do you see it? Yeah. Uh, you know, Wigan could say theirs is perfect because they wouldn't have had too many sore bodies after such a convincing win. But for us, the last 20 minutes was really important. Um, St. Helens in the last 20 minutes were winning. They made three errors, three penalties. In the last 20 minutes, we made one error, which meant we got opportunities. It took us three chances to get there. And, you know, I got some credit for scoring that try, but that was the third opportunity we'd had on the Saints line to, to win the game. You know, we had a, a drop goal charge down. We had a... They charged, they, put too much pressure on we ran once before that so um yeah it was it was great prep in terms of finishing a game i think you're always looking looking back at that as well the the the, the decision to to take that second penalty obviously shows the confidence in your team to get back up there yeah you know, rather than go for the try and, and the win to take your two points you know behind well not everyone on the field agreed with it um, we got the leaders together, myself, Mickey McClure and Ben Garcia. Um, Mickey was saying, no, we're going to score here. I said, I think we take two. I was confident we could get back in that area of the field, you see. And, and it, it might look like a bit of a bit of a strange decision at the time. And, and it felt it a little bit. But I just I was really confident we'd get down there and we'd get another penalty or we'd score a try. So I just wanted to be within touching distance mm. of Saints and put that little bit of pressure on them. Right then, Sam, we're going to have to speak about it. Last game. But it's the last game against Wigan as well. And you won the grand final three times with Wigan. Is it going to mean even more playing your old club? Yeah, I think so. It's, you know, the the ideal for me. I've got a lot of friends at Wigan, um, you know, friends for life there. And I played most of most of my career has been, been in a cherry and white jersey. So it's a club that I love. Um, so just to be able to share Saturday with them is amazing. The fairy tale ending isn't playing them; it, it, it's beating them, though. So um, that's that's firmly my focus. And when you started as a seven-year-old at Chorley Panthers, yep. Do you think it'd end up here? No, I didn't think it when I was about sixteen. I was still rubbish then, um, so <laughs> it was way past that when I still didn't think I'd have a chance. Um, you know, my goal was to play one game for Wigan Warriors after coming through their academy, and and that was it. And and as you progress, your your goals change and it turned into wanting to win silverware and, and this is you know there's there's no better place to win than, than on this field and you've won it three times before what would it mean to make it a fourth and with the Catalan Dragons it mean everything more for you know I've got a nice story of finishing and playing Wigan but that's that's a subplot to what is a amazing opportunity for us as Catalan Dragons to win our first ever grand final we've we've we're a, we're a very young club, you know, 17 years old in comparison to Wigan at 150 years old. So um, our owner is very passionate. He, he formed the club back in 2005, and and for for him to get repaired with with the biggest possible trophy, I think, is very fitting. And tell us, what did Steve McNamara say to you when you signed in 2018? He said, "We want you to be part of the first team to win." A grand final. It was really clear that was his that was his message. I spoke to the owner, and that was it. They wanted to bring what they saw as winners into the club, people that had been there and done it before, people like Mickey McClure and myself. So we went in as experienced players with a with a view to help others. And we've got a great squad, a lot of young, passionate French kids coming through, which they've come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. You can see we're producing some real talent. And if you do win it on Saturday, you won't wake up on Sunday and think I'm going to go around again. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'll wake up on Sunday and limp my way to the pub. That's all I can do. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm finished. My, my body can't take any more of this. Um, Scully, it's embarrassing. Come on, sum up this man. Oh, he's just been a, an iconic figure of the, of the game. You know, one of one of the greatest in in the Super League era um, and, and ever. Um, undoubtedly, and I think his performances, the way the way the way Sam's evolved. I know a lot of people have spoke about it this week. Um, you know, from being that that skinny kid running rings around people, it was all skinny. about <laughs> it was all about the you know the the elusiveness. You know, I think to to evolve the way he's evolved. I mean, to win Man of Steel ten years apart just shows you know what what kind of player he is, and you know now his influence on the on the Catalan Dragons you know over the, over the last five years has, has just been phenomenal. I think you know as much as his performance and performances on the field, it's probably as much as his influence around the, his teammates. Sam, very best of luck. Thank you very much. Enjoy Saturday night. Right, let's hear from Sam's coach, Steve McNamara. Oh, well, 
Steve, welcome to Old Trafford. This is a, a culmination of 12 months of hard work. All comes down to Saturday night. You're right, hard work, uh, commitment from everybody involved. And you start the pre-season off, you want to give yourself the best opportunity to give yourself an opportunity to play on this. And uh, we're here. Uh, Saturday night's going to be a great game. For, in my opinion, first versus second. Uh, to two teams that should be in the final this year. And uh, it's going to be a great game. Yeah, you mentioned first versus second, the two best teams in the competition. Are we set for the, the best game of the year? Yeah, I think so. I think what we learned 2021 was that we, I thought we played very good in that game, but very good wasn't good enough to win. You know, and uh, watching the NRL grand final and you know last week, and uh, I think the Broncos were outstanding, but outstanding wasn't even good enough to win. Excellent, you, know, you need excellence, and that's what both teams will try and achieve. And you try and peak on this night to, to play the best game of your season. You know your team are good enough. They were good enough two years ago. Have you been working on maybe a little bit of mental toughness, just a little bit of maybe perhaps blocking out the noise and the pressure coming into this one? It's, it's probably just more experience. I think Ben Garcia spoke about it in the press conference. We've got a lot of boys who, who it was their first game on a stage like this. You know, the experience of it, being in around it, and uh, I thought we dealt with it really well. You know, I, you know, we we wet phased by it two years ago, but we're a bit more experienced with it now this time round. And obviously, we've evolved. We've got a couple of different players in the team there as well who have got that experience as well. And when you think about the the journey you've been on since coming to Catalan Dragons, you pulled the club through a bit of a relegation battle, went on to win the Challenge Cup, the the League Leaders Shield. Is this the kind of the final chapter to write, the kind of crowning glory of that story? Yeah, we need to get it done. I think there's been a lot of work gone on by a lot of teams. You see, you, a lot of people, you see the team on the field, but the team behind that team is the coaching staff, which has been outstanding. The team behind that team is our administration staff, which for a team like Dragons, what has to travel so much, we need the support of that. So there's a whole lot of effort gone in by a whole lot of people within the whole organisation to give us an opportunity to perform on nights like this. Now it's our turn to go out there and sat there and perform. We've seen Wigan make some really fast starts, no quicker than what they did at the weekend. How important is it going to be that you, you get the tone right in the dressing room and the warm-up and, and the walk-out to make sure that you're ready to yeah. weather what will be a, an inevitable onslaught? Yeah, we're ready. I know we're ready. I know the players inside out uh, and I know we're ready. We won't miss the start. That is a fact. We won't miss the start this week and uh, we'll start with intensity and that will go throughout through all 80 minutes, I'm sure. And this atmosphere, it'll obviously be kind of very tilted in the direction of Wigan in terms of a home crowd. But have you spoken to your players about how they deal with that? I know they do it week in, week out when you travel away, but this will be slightly different. Oh, we'll probably have more support in these games than we do any other game. We go to an anomaly away game. Imagine we play at Wigan away and this, we score a try and it's silence because you know, there's no fans there for us. And sometimes you sat there as a coach going, is it a try? Is it not a try? Is he giving it? But on this occasion, we... Uh, we really revel in the in the atmosphere. It's we know we know there's going to be outnumbered in terms of Wigan fans, but I think a lot of the neutrals will probably support Catalans and the effort our fans have made to get across is superb. And uh, yeah, we we look forward to it rather than be faced by it. Both sets of fans will be wanting to say farewell to a, a legend of our sport. Sam Tompkins has has done a huge amount in the game. He's done a huge amount for Catalans Dragons. What kind of man has he been like to work with over the last few years? Well, for a number of years, first as the England coach for myself, he was hugely important in terms of that period uh, for me as a coach. But then I think his acquisition to, to the Dragons was a really big stepping stone. We were doing some good things. We were accelerating the improvement of our club. But when you bring somebody like him in who competes on everything, um, knows the game inside out, has influence on everybody else around him, other people start to sit up and take notice. And that acceleration you get other players want to join your club it improves your players existing players at the club so the impact he has had on the Catalan Dragons cannot be underestimated it's probably been the biggest one single biggest signing that has made the biggest difference to our organisation probably along with Michael McAlorum as well who's going to be playing again next year. What will it mean to you on a personal level if you're walking out of here with that trophy on Saturday night? It's not a personal thing for me um, as a coach, I get to stand in front of the cameras, I get to talk to the press, I get to do the, the nice bits there, but anybody who works in team sport will understand the effort from everybody involved in your organisation is huge. The coach uh, is the one who stands in front of it, but the, the effort from everybody involved in the staff, it's more about that, it's more about the collective, it's what it is for 
the blokes that we work with every single day we put so much in and uh, of course from a personal point of view it would be nice to to be talking about the win in front of the camera there on, on Saturday night and, and everything else we've achieved but seriously it's about uh, what it is for our club, our organisation, the whole of our staff. Well best of luck of the weekend, enjoy it. Cheers, thank you. So Steve McNamara talking to Lewis and I'm delighted to welcome to the show now the Wigan Warriors coach Matty Pete. Matty thanks for joining us, how are you feeling? feel good, uh, I've said a few times uh, on the other interviews so far it's felt very much like a, a regular week preparing the team, training, uh, but coming over here, you know, entering the stadium and then tomorrow we go over to the hotel, you know, it, it begins to hit home that we're, you know, we're coming to a fantastic event on Saturday evening and it's the reason we work so hard. Has it hit you then, having a look around, seeing the posts up, seeing the pitch? Yeah, absolutely, just walking down the tunnel, driving into the, the, the arena, reminds me so many times driving in as a, as a fan first and foremost and then in recent years as, a, as an assistant coach or a member of the staff, so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's why we do it. There's no worse feeling than, than being at home, not involved in this week and having to sit and watch two other teams. So that's all I keep thinking. It's what we spoke about as a group. Uh, it's a bad feeling as a professional to not be involved in these events. You were, you're looking forward to walking out that tunnel, Matty? You know, everything yeah. you've worked for all year. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it, to be honest, Scully. Enjoy these events. Uh, tomorrow, being in the hotel with the players, and as you mentioned, though, that's, that's one thing I've never experienced is walking out that tunnel. So we're going to embrace it. Uh, you know, you're not you're not going to tell us your uh, your game plan, but <laughs> where's the game one? Like every other game of rugby, it'll be through the, the forward packs. It'll be a team that kicks well. You know, wins collisions. Uh, last week's game didn't pan out quite as we expected, but I think in uh, in big games, particularly, I think the teams that look after the ball, win collision, and kick well, uh, will come out on top. Do you think the the semi finals? Obviously, Catalan had a, had a real physical battle against against Saint Jude. Not so much against against Hull KR. Is that a, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Obviously, coming into a game like this, obviously physically, you'll be imagine, you know, fresh. Yeah, it's a bit like the week off when people ask you about that. It's it's what you make it. Uh, so if we win on Saturday, I will say that it was great. It was perfect preparation. If we underperform, then uh, people will read into it. But I think, you know, after you know thirty odd games in a season, you know, I think you could pick holes in every week and say was it ideal. But ultimately, a bit about which players execute, which players embrace the occasion and you know, yep. stick to the plan, as you say, but also nail those crucial moments. You must be delighted with your form, though. I mean, it's 10 Super League games on the bounce. Yeah, our form's good. I think pretty much from the Challenge Cup semi-final, we, uh, you know, we, we drew a line in the sand then and we got our focus. And I, I feel like we've slowly started playing sort of playoff, playoff rugby, I think, at times in the season. We've been a bit uh, wishy-washy, let's say. And uh, I think that taught us a lesson that game. Along with Hull FC at home, when we scraped home in Golden Point the week after that, we went to Catalan. And, and since then, I do think we've played a bit of a different style, different mentality. And uh, we've got a young group of players, and uh, we're quite a new coaching staff, so we are learning all the time. Um, you've obviously had a number of roles at Wigan, so what will it mean walking out as the head coach on Saturday at 10 to 6? Yeah, it'll be fantastic. Um, obviously, very well connected to the club. But, you know, when you lead an academy team out as well, and when you lead, you know, me and Scully work together for England Academy, you know, to, you take the same pride in, in working with groups of blokes just because there's more people watching. Internally, it doesn't make you more proud. You just get a bit more attention. So I'm proud of the group that we've got. I'm proud of the club, that, you know, and some of the things that are going on. So it would be fantastic to win because it would make a lot of people very happy. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be proud, you know, win or lose at the weekend. I know the group of blokes we've got. You won the Challenge Cup last year. What would it mean to win the grand final? Yeah, as I said, I, it would mean a lot to me most because I, I know it's going to make a lot of people who I care about really happy and uh, probably more significantly the players. Uh, but everyone at the club, from, from Ian Lennigan right through our, our staff at Robin Park, through the local schools and community. Uh, that's why we do it, is to to put smiles on people's faces in our town. We're, you know, I'd like to think we're a team that is very connected to, to the yeah. town. And uh, we've we've got to perform in a way that's fitting for for all those supporters. I think there's been a, there's been a massive you know improvement in in your attack probably the last second half of the of the year. Is it a, is it a master stroke of yours? Obviously, Bevan, you've got you know with him and Jai Field, there was a lot of talk about them two in in Wigan, two of the uh, you know the best strike players in in Super League in World Rugby. You know, putting Bevan at, at six, having both him and Jai around the ball a lot. 
has made a difference? It has, yeah. Uh, you want your best players and your most threatening players with the ball in the hands. It made it easier because Abbas Miski was playing really well on the wing. And, and I think what, whatever spine you go with, Scully, I think once you settle on it, it's the work you do with them. It's their time in the meeting rooms. It's their time on the training field. So I think, you know, regardless of who's in what positions, it's it being settled. Uh, and obviously they've got a lot of talent. I think they've had a big bearing as well on, on Harry's game. I think Harry's been, been exceptional. He was excellent against when OKR. You've, when you've got them threats around you as well, you know, there's... I agree. It's, it's the best half-back pairings are often a bit of balance, aren't they? And uh, Catalan of that as well, if you look with Mitchell Pearce and Tyrone May. But I think you're right. I think Harry suits Bevan and, and vice versa. So Harry stepped up, to, you know, in the in the recent uh, ten weeks or so. Yep. As I mentioned, that style of been playing. A lot of it's been built around Harry's kicking game, and it was probably playing a bit more patient. Although we've scored some some outstanding tries and had some decent score lines, we've actually done that by building the game better. And and sometimes, you know, Bevan and Jay being a bit more willing to make the simple plays and allowing the game to unfold. Uh, quick word on Sam Tompkins, his, his final game. What kind of ambassador has he been for Rugby League? I think for the last 15 years, he's been the man. Uh, you know, I think he, his game's evolved over the years. He burst onto the scene. It was all about flair and pace and uh, flashy things, let's say. But everyone who's working with him at Wigan or England knows that, first and foremost, Sam is ultimate competitor. Uh, a winner and I think how his games evolved and adapted the way he's led Catalan as a club in the last four or five years I think has been outstanding and this year particularly those people won't know just how he is with that knee uh, I think the way he keeps dragging himself onto the field and then match winning you know, or man of the match performances I think you know Bevan got a man, of a man of steel the other day, and rightly so as, as the best player in the competition. But I think for the old, the way the man of steel was first introduced, I think what Sam's done this year is, is remarkable. And you know whatever happens on, on Saturday evening, he's going to get uh, an outstanding welcome from from both sets of fans. Can we just say the very best of luck? Thanks for your time. Thanks for what you've done all season as well. And best of luck on Saturday. And enjoy it. Thanks, Mark. Good luck, Matty. Right, so uh, Matty Pete there. So we've just mentioned Bevan French, the uh, Steve Prescott MBE Man of Steel. Let's hear from him. He spoke to Lewis after picking up his award. Bevan, congratulations, Steve Prescott, Man of Steel. Has it sunk in yet? What an honour that is. Yeah, it's, like you said, it's a it's a massive honour, and um, you know, being there all night looking at that list, um, you know, the amount of great people that have been there, won it before me. Um, yeah, it's starting to sink in now that you know, your, your name is up against, you know, on the same list as those type of players and, um, yeah, just completely honoured at the moment. Some achievement as well, considering you've played quite a few positions this season. You've fitted in wherever you've needed to, but you've performed at the highest level throughout. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's just the right attitude, really, and having great people around me. Um, um, as long as I keep turning up each week, willing to learn, um, you know, the same as everyone else in our squad. Everyone just wants to keep learning every week improving bit by bit and you know we're lucky enough to have those people around us that can help us do those sort of things so um, yeah been, been in a few positions but just um, lucky enough to have those people around me. You mentioned on stage that you've had some some challenging times since you joined Wigan since you joined the Super League when they were when it, things were toughest did you ever think that maybe there'd be days like this and achievements like this? No um, just during those times really I was really contemplating whether I was coming back really uh, you know, those, when those sort of things happen, it's you start to think, well, do I spend more time at home with my family and um, you know make those days count really, um, rather than being on the other side of the world trying to chase your dreams and those sort of things. So um, yeah, it didn't really cross my mind at, at that point in time really um, that I'd be here holding this and you know definitely going into a grand final this weekend. So um, yeah, definitely didn't cross my mind at all. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by a teammate of Bevan French's and his skipper. It's Liam Farrell. Liam, first of all, how are you feeling? Yeah, very good. Um, it's been a great week so far. Obviously, come to the media day, it just builds up the excitement a little bit more towards Saturday. Now, you won it four times before. Still get excited when you rock up and see this place? Yeah, 100%. They, they don't change. Um, I think these days are always special especially when it's the two best teams throughout the year here and um, it's one we're really looking forward to and um, something we're going to cherish. First uh, first one to skip a faz. You're looking forward to leading the boys out and hopefully picking the trophy up. Yeah, a, a very proud moment for myself. Uh, I made it clear at the beginning of the year when I was made skipper that uh, proud for myself, my family and especially the town to represent the town and 
uh, to be doing it here at Old Trafford and walking the lads out is um, something I'm going to, you know, really cherish. Yeah, it's going to be a special day. I've obviously, much talk in the in the Wigan pack about getting on top of the the Catalan forwards. Obviously, they, they try and lead the way with the physicality. Something your uh, your boys are up for? Yeah, it's it's probably been one of the main focuses. The way Catalan have played all year, they they tried to dominate you physically early on, um, and rightly so. They got a big pack, uh, an experienced pack, so. We know we've got to get on top of that, and um, if we can do that and get it into a set for set game, then we'll, you know, we'll give ourselves a chance. And you come into this in great form. That's ten wins on the bounce in the Super League. Yeah, we. Um, do you know what we've the, we've not been doing anything special. Uh, we've just been doing the basic things right, and um, it's worked really well for us at the moment. And we're just trusting in each other, uh, making sure we all do our own jobs to the best ability we can, and um, it's been paying off for us really well. I was there when you lifted the league leader's shield. Uh, you celebrated that night as well, didn't you? I mean, you know, you've won it a few times before, but you still celebrated that night. I thought that was quite significant. Yeah, we, we knew the few weeks before we'd we'd have a chance again the league leaders, and we said we'd make sure we celebrate it like we it deserves it, the right it needs. And um, I think when we won it, um, deservedly so, to be the most consistent team throughout the year, um, I think it should be celebrated. And, just because of the way the league set up and the grand finals, the pinnacle, uh, we just wanted to make sure we give it the celebrations it deserved. Right, can we talk about one of your mates? Are you players for your position? Come on, what's Sam Tompkins <laughs> really like? Come on, tell us the truth. Oh, I'm what's sick of really talking like? about him, let's be honest. <laughs> Look, it's going to be a lot of talk. Uh, it's obviously his, his final game. Obviously, he won it three times with Wigan as well. Come on, what's he really like? He, he, look, he, he's a great bloke. Um, he deserves all the accolades he's getting. He deserves all the attention he's been getting. Um, I've said it many times, it, to win the Man of Steel like he has done. Uh, once at the beginning of his career when he was probably dancing around players in a different kind of way he does now, and to the back end of his career where he's, he's probably using more of his brain, uh, his skill set, and because uh, his knees are a bit busted now, so he has to find a different way and he's, he's super talented. And what's he brought to the game? Um, great question. I think the game changed a lot when he came in, that 2009-2010 period. He, uh, the way teams were playing, uh, the full-back playing out the back and the, the long balls and his style of play just changed and you've seen a lot over the years where teams have tried to develop players like Sam but I think he's been one of the best at what he does. And uh, have you spoken to him this week? Uh, yeah, I spoke to him briefly, sent him a text after the game last week and he returned one on the Saturday so there's been a small message there and i see you on Saturday as well. I think uh, I think Sam as well. You know, you you played with one of the best in, in lockers as well. You know, the back end of his career when he, he slowed down. Do you think it's as much as his influence being around the players? Not necessarily about always what they do, but how they get the best out of the teammates as well. Yeah, of course, and he does that just with his presence, um, his experience of being in big games. He he can show you the way without even really doing anything. And him being on the training field or him being just around the facility really helps you out. And. Um, you mentioned the lockers, he's probably one of the best at it, but I think Sam's got that aura about him now as well. So Let's just finish speaking about a few of your teammates. Obviously, we just heard from Bevan French and the, the Man of Steel this year. Jay Field's been fantastic. Harry Smith was superb against Hulk here. Yeah, Harry, I, I couldn't speak highly enough about him. Um, I've played quite close with him now for the last three or four years, and his first couple of years was a real learning curve for him. I think he learned a lot in them, but I think this year he's been outstanding. Uh, he's in field kicking has been unbelievable all year and I couldn't tell the amount he, he practices over the post. It is one, maybe two hours a day. Then I think you've seen it at the weekend, he kicked seven from seven, which is, you know, a real proud moment for him, I think. And as a final question, you've won it four times before, which we've mentioned. What would it mean to win a fifth, but a skipper as well? Actually lifting a trophy, the first person to lift a trophy, what would that mean on Saturday night? Yeah, I think I think every grand final is special. You, you know yourself. That, they all have the different memories, um, but the one that stands out for me is to to lead these lads out. Um, they've, I think they've deserved to get here. Both teams deserve to get here, but uh, us to walk out and me, me to lead them will be a great occasion for me. And um, yeah, it'll be a dream come true, a real dream come true to to win the trophy. Well, from me and Scully, look, the very best of luck. Thank you. The Cheers very best, best of luck Cheers, on Thank Saturday you. night. So, uh, Liam Farrell will be leading out Wigan on Saturday night. Big announcement this week. Betfred have extended their deal, not just of the Betfred Super League, but the whole Rugby League family have extended a deal for a further three years. Full house. An electric atmosphere. Champions 2019. The Leeds Rhinos 2019.
Betfred women Super League champions. Oh, it's 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 well it's well it's well a surreal season. And St. Helens are champions once again. St. Helens are Challenge Cup winners. So a big announcement from uh, Betfred, a further three years. And Scully, obviously I work for Betfred, but I'm absolutely delighted. It's fantastic, you know, to, to get the support of Betfred for, for another three years. Um, you know, the financial support is, is fantastic, but I think the way yourself, Fred, and the, and the team just immerse themselves within the game and, and fully support it and get behind and, and promote is, uh, is, 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 is exceptional and, you know, Thank God it's going on for at least another three years and I'm sure it'll go on a lot longer than that. Uh, we first did it in 2017 when uh, Leeds beat uh, Castleford here, but we just did the men's grand final. Now we're doing the women's grand final, we're doing the championship, we're doing League One, we're the principal partner of the England team and we're doing the wheelchair competition as well. On Sunday night it's a grand final of a wheelchair competition, the Leeds Rhinos versus Wigan Warriors. Look, I'm going to be there, I love the game. It is a brilliant sport, isn't it? It's an amazing sport, and I think you know the, the World Cup proved that. You know, the England beating France in, in that final just captured the uh, the imagination of everybody, didn't it? What a, a fantastic sport it is, and uh, and I'm sure you know this uh, this final where we're going in Leeds is is going to be no different. It's a brutal sport as well, isn't it? It is a brutal sport. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. You know, I think we we've got a pretty physical sport on this uh, on this field, but what they them guys doing them wheelchairs is is phenomenal, and you know it's it's such a a fantastic, fast, you know, exciting game. And uh, as I say, you're in for a, a spectacular final. Yeah, it's live on Sky on Sunday night. The Wigan Warriors versus the Leeds Rhinos. Let's hear from Wigan's Adam Rigby. Well, Adam, you've got one game left with Wigan this season and it's the big one, the Super League Grand Final in Manchester. How's the feeling just a couple of days out from the game? Yeah, it's good. Uh, we had a training session last night, uh, pushed it out, like ran some drills and... Everyone's feeling quite relaxed, uh, which I think it's good going into it beforehand. Uh, everyone's not feeling too tense about it. Um, we've had a bit of a 50-50 season on our games, so for us to even be able to get, say that we're in a grand final is amazing. If you'd have offered us that uh, beginning of the year for both championship and for Super League teams, we'd have snatched your hands off at it. Um, going forward, uh, we just need to really focus on our game once we get there. Um, it's a big event, it's going to be a similar sort of uh, environment to our World Cup games with the music and uh, the lighting sort of thing, which is completely different for us. Uh, it's something we don't see every week in our league games, um, so hopefully we can just try and uh, blind that out uh, once the whistle goes and just play against the other five people against us. Yeah, how much has this been a, a work in progress across the whole season? I'm sure you'd have set out at the beginning of the year looking to take this as far as you can. Now you've made it to the final, goal must be to win it. Yeah, yeah. Um, going into the game, like like any grand final, everyone's uh, looking to pick up some silverware at the end. Um, but in terms of, <coughs> uh, sorry, the last few weeks, um, especially the game that we had against London, we really built, and it was probably the best game we've played in the last two years uh, as the Super League team. We really gelled, we really clicked, and things just seemed to happen as we'd been planning it to do. Um, so to get into the grand final, uh, it's amazing. You mentioned the, the kind of similarity in feel to those World Cup games of England. How much is that experience of being a part of that World Cup going to help you in this big game environment? Yeah, it's a similar sort of thing for both teams. Uh, but I think there's two England internationals in the Leeds team for this uh, weekend. There's two uh, World Cup England members in the squad for Wigan. Um, other less experienced players in both teams, uh, so hopefully... But ones that have been in the finals before we can try and guide them through uh, both Wigan and Leeds sides should be a really even game. 
Yeah, really looking forward to that. Leeds Rhinos versus the Wigan Warriors in the wheelchair grand final. And I'm going to be lucky enough to hand over the trophy on Sunday night as well. Right then, Scully, you've won it four times. We've had some great guests on. Obviously, a lot of the talk is going to be about Sam Tompkins in his final game of rugby league. And his final game of rugby league is going to be here at the Theatre of James. It doesn't get any better, does it, for, for Sam? I think, you know, the, the semi-final was all about, you know, Sam versus James Roby and which one was going to finish at the at the Theatre of Dreams. And, you know, could he have written the script any any better in that, that semi-final to score the winning try? And I think it's it's something that a player like Sam Tompkins deserves. He's, he's been an iconic figure in the sport for the, for the last 15 years. And, um, you know, the, a way to bow, bow out. And, and Sam won't want anything less than, than, a, than a success on, uh, on Saturday. And we've said it in the show throughout, this is the best two teams in the competition this year. Yeah, I think the, the league proves it, doesn't it? It's 1v2. They've been the most consistent sides and, uh, and rightly so, you know, they should be here on, uh, on the, come Saturday. I think we're in for a fantastic game. I can't wait for the start. I think two sides who, who thrive off the physicality. Um, you know, we know Cat how Catalan are going to come. They're going to come out of the blocks and they're going to try and bash Wigan. Uh, and Wigan, it's up to them to, to match it and get on top. And I think Wigan have probably got the edge on, on, on attack. With the, with the flair and certainly around field and French, which we, we always speak about. But, you know, they've got to win that physical battle first. Uh, you've never lost here, Scully. You've won it four times. Um, look, the build-up is fantastic. About quarter to six, the build-up is superb to the grand final. What's it like walking out from that corner it, as a player? It's a moment you, you can't buy, Mark. You know, you get asked all the time, do you miss playing? I don't miss playing one bit up until Saturday, <laughs> about about quarter to six. You know, walking out of that corner to, to the roar of the crowd. And I think rugby league, we... You know, we, we, we create the best atmosphere in, in all sports and I'll be certainly envious of, uh, of them boys walking out that, that, that tunnel, um, you know, before the game. And you, then you take that into that first 10 minutes of the, of the game. You know, it's such a fast start. I always, I always to kind of compare it to a, to a test match, that, that next level up from a, from a Super League match. And, uh, and that's, you know, expect a fireworks. Well, the last four years you have tipped your beloved St. Helens. Obviously, you can't tip them. I was no. right as well, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> For four years you were. But uh, right then, come on, no sitting on the fence. Who wins the I think Bedford Grand I Final? I think if Wigan control this, this Wigan pack and they can match the, the ferocity that I think that we've seen in the, in the semi-final against, against Saints, I think Wigan, they're just a side who, who do it on the big stage. Uh, I just think they're, they're that resilient. You know, Matty Pete is, is an exceptional coach, as is Steve McNamara. But I just think Wigan will, will probably just have that edge and I'll, 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 tip, I'll tip Wigan to win. Well, thanks for your time. It's the uh, 26th Betfred Grand Final on Saturday. Wigan have won it on five occasions. Catalan Dragons in the final in 2021, but have never lifted the Betfred Super League trophy. Could they do it on Saturday night? It'll be an absolute cracker. Six o'clock kickoff for the Wigan Warriors versus the Catalan Dragons. These are the men we have come to see. have won this semi-final in the most dramatic of fashion. Here's Jake Field into the line, electric pace for Marshall, going for the line, Marshall! Warriors going for the corner! Get the tickets booked for Old Trafford, Wigan. Wigan going back to the grand final. Iron May stabs a little kick in, and Kieran will get his second of the game. And then bullets the pass out, Tom Davis! in the corner, Sam Tompkins has taken the Catalan Dragons to Old Trafford, surely.